She's a defender of donuts. Three meals are faster than none. She'll make it all good in your neighborhood. She'll make sure we have loads of fun. Who will help Lily? Who will catch Billy? It's Tracy the Tricycle Trooper. Hi, Floss Tube. My name's Jody, and I'm Trixie Tricycle, both here on YouTube and on Instagram. And this is a channel about cross stitch and crafts related to cross stitch and a little quilting um, and all of the things that are associated with those kinds of crafts. So it's been about a month, a little over a month since my last video and uh, just really busy with work and um, I have a lot of things to show you today so I am just gonna go ahead and get right into it um, to start off with we have uh, a number of stitch alongs for people's birthdays and I wanted to go into those first so the first one um, chronologically is going to be Abby's birthday Abby Bella stitch is on Instagram and she also has a floss tube channel and um, her stitch along is Bella Stitch B Day Sal 2021. And like always, I'll put um, the text here on the video and then I'll put it in the description below the video so you can use the drop down to refer to anything um, that I'll talk about today. And usually that takes me a couple days to upload. So if you have a specific question, you're more than willing or more than welcome to words. Uh, you're more than welcome to put that in the comments and I'm pretty good, especially the first like week or two after um, a video to try to respond to all of the comments. Um, but usually I try to be pretty thorough in the description about the charts and the fabric count and the flosses, etc. So to start out with, um, uh, Bella Stitch B Day Sal. She uh, is inviting everybody to start or stitch um, any of the Barrick ladies designs. So that includes Kathy Barrick, uh, Hello from Liz Matthews, and Carriage House Samplings. And if you guys don't know, um, Kathy Barrick is Liz Matthews' mom. So um, they're all related. So there's a, a so many amazing, awesome charts that I. Uh, not only own but that other people have and that are stitching and so go on you can use that hashtag and go and see what other people and join in um, even if you're already maybe if you're already doing one of those so um, I have chosen this as my project so this is Pennsylvania pinwheel by carriage house samplings and I got this off or I got this from uh, kitten stitcher her online store. She has a pretty great um, selection of all of those designers and so if you are interested um, in joining in uh, feel free to hop on her website or any of your other online uh, vendors where you get your charts. So I'm going to be using the it calls for um, MPI silks and also for DMC but I'm just pulling from my stash so I'm going to be using um, these on a piece of Old Salem. This is 30 count Old Salem by the Primitive Hair. And I'm going to be using two classic color works um, flosses. One is black coffee and the other is ye old gold. And then the red is by Color and Cotton and that is in the colorway ruby. So I think that will be pretty. So happy birthday, Abby. By the time this video goes up, knowing me, how long it takes me to edit and post and upload and all that, it'll probably already be your birthday. Part, some parts of the world I think it already is, so anyway. So that will be fun. Um, the next one is for Betsy Klager. The, today is November 5th, which is also known as the fifth day of Betsy Klager's birthday month. Her birthday's on the 19th, and you guys have probably seen this, but Nikki Noodles started um, a stitch along for Betsy, and that is going to be this 
Little Birds by Blackbird Designs. And uh, Betsy, of course, has uh, made it clear that you can stitch anything you like for her birthday. She um, go to her Instagram and you can see um, she basically says stitch whatever you like. So, um, but I'm going to be doing this and I, I'm going to talk about um, the Leo and Roxy floss conversions that I put together. The first one I did was actually for the next cell that I'll talk about and that's for Laura um, of Brenda and the Serial Starter Laura. Her birthday is January 1st, and so that'll be the next thing I talk about. But I had done a color conversion from the called for flosses to um, Leo and Roxy overdyed floss. And Leo and Roxy is a Canadian um, dyer who uh, can, all of those can be purchased through Evertotes. And that is Caroline's store. Um, she's off the grid needle arts, both here on. Uh, floss tube and then on Instagram um, but she has an online store where they have beautiful charts and um, it's the exclusive vendor for um, Leo and Roxy flosses and if you watch my last video you know that I um, had had gotten a few of those flosses through different projects kind of from Jacob from Modern Folk Embroidery and then I decided to just buy the whole collection and I love them. Of course, it's like, you know, a new toy. And so as soon as I um, got those, started opening them up, it was around the same time that I had ordered um, Laura's Stitch Along project. And I thought, actually, it was Gwyneth, who is Curling Stones and Cross Stitches. It was her idea to, and she had asked Caroline, like, hey, do you think you could maybe do a color conversion for Leo and Roxy for Elizabeth Isles? And Caroline, of course, is, you know, up to her ankles in alligators, <laughs> getting all of these amazing projects and designs and um, kits out and in time for um, the release dates. And so, you know, they're a small company and Caroline was like, and, you know, I jumped in on our little text thread and I was like, I could probably, you know, put it together and having no idea <laughs> what. A color conversion entails but I have all of the DMC colors I've got you know that collection and I had I had ordered the silk set for Elizabeth Isles that came from um, the Scarlet Letter I just ordered directly from the Scarlet Letter and so I had all of the called for so when you've got them all in front of you it makes it relatively easy easy <laughs> to pull from um, the Leo and Roxy collection and then put them together and see how those would go together. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit of that today. But of course, after I did Laura's um, color conversion, I had to do Betsy's too because, you know, Betsy, friends. So that long preamble to the Leo and Roxy color version. Now you probably, if you've been following on Instagram, you've seen them. Um, they are under the hashtag. You can go and look at those online. And now Caroline uh, at Evertotes has them both, both of those full floss collections in her store. So you could go and look at those and she's got them priced out for both two over two stitching. So two strands of floss over two threads and one over two. So those are priced differently. And keep in mind that um, it's a Canadian store. And so if you're in the US, our exchange rate is pretty favorable for people in the US. Um, and also each of the skeins of Leo and Roxy are eight yards, whereas a lot of the over dyed flosses are five. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're sort of looking through and you know pricing out your projects and getting ready to go. So that said, and I'm not sponsored. <laughs> I don't work for anybody. I just decided to do this thing that I thought sounded really fun and that it's kind of turned into a, it is, it is involved for everyone that chooses colors for designers and for ever. I am in awe because it is a tremendous amount of work. And, um, I think I was watching Lindy stitches, um, Stephanie, who just released some beautiful Christmas things today. So go and check that out. Uh, but she was talking about, you know, when she is pulling floss together to make decisions around what she's going to be stitching with, 
it just turns into, I mean, like it is a, my table was covered with, <laughs> you'd think it would be a relatively easy thing to do and uh, my entire craft room was a complete disaster just trying to pull out all of those things and take photos and look at it and see if it was going to fit. And so what I ended up doing is uh, I actually started a couple, I started those two projects because I wanted to make sure kind of as a test, a pre-test stitch that they were going to look cute together. So anyway, I'm going to get right to it. So here is uh, Little Birds, Blackbird Designs. Um, the original flosses are, uh, were called for is a, a combination of classic color works and weak style works. And of course, Blackbird Designs, you know, they, they do a beautiful, beautiful job of selecting their colors. And that was intimidating to be perfectly honest with you, but, um, this was my best shot. So these are the colors that I put together, um, from the Leo and Roxy palette. And so you can see if you put them side by side, you know, there's a little bit of a, there's obviously differences, um, in, in a little So you can see that the Falu Red, which is the Leo and Roxy Red, is slightly bluer. And the Royale, which is the blue, is just a little bit more vibrant than the blue corn. Um, I think that Caroline describes it best. When you're doing a color conversion to a different floss, you're not necessarily trying to copy what the original flosses were. It's an interpretation of it. And so adding some a little bit of vibrance or adding a brighter color um, and making it your own and making it a little bit more it's custom right so it's it's the colors that you choose or maybe you've chosen a fabric that's different than the called for and so you just want it to you know you feel like certain colors will work a little bit better or you like the vendor and you like the flosses and you like the way they feel which is in, in my case exactly how, how I have experienced this so I mentioned in my last video that I just really love these flosses are just they stitch a lot like silk um, but with a price point of over dyed cotton which for a lot of people I think makes a big difference in what they are able to stitch so but they're just really nice they don't they don't get in knots very much they just they stitch really smoothly they don't fray and so my experience so far has been amazing um, with these flosses so this is what I um, was able to put together. This is the this is as far as I've gotten on my little test stitch, and I you know this is my start ahead. <laughs> so so this is what I have so far for little birds, and those are all Leo and Roxy flosses. You can see that it's slightly different than the um, original called for that the windows in the house and the door are slightly a little bit more teal and what I like about it is it feels it feels like a Mediterranean type house which you know it's neither here nor there but that's kind of the, the vibe that I get from it it feels a little bit beachy and happy and but the flower and the vine and all of that just really pops off this fabric. And this is um, a piece of 36 count, picture this plus in the color Legacy. Um, I'm trying to get that, the selvage has that orange on it and I kind of, I don't want you to have to see that. Anyway, it came out, I think it's coming out really pretty. I'm really enjoying it. And so um, that's my color conversion, so please, Join us in celebrating Betsy, and she's turning 60, and Nikki came up with the hashtag, uh, Betsy is old, Sal. So I'll link that and uh, put that here. And that is that. So the original color conversion that I um, started playing with was for Laura's birthday, which starts on um, January 1st. And hers hashtag is Laura's big birthday sell. And that chart is Elizabeth Isles. And that's by the Scarlet Letter. 
and lots of you are participating in this stitch along and I love it it's a beautiful chart it's got that geode style of, on the wing and the tail where it's sort of a concentric you know it's got colors in a basically in a spiral or just sort of expanding circles um, but the colors are really beautiful and bright and this was the original um, when Gwyneth was asking in our thread about doing a color conversion that was the chart that she was referring to so um, just like the other just like little birds I had the original sets of colors <laughs> so this is the DMC palette kind of hard to see but this is the DMC palette for it's got that bright pink and um, the blue and all the different greens and then you can see this is the set of silks that came straight from the Scarlet Letter. So these are the called for Auvergne Soie, Soie d'Alger silk. Um, and again, that bright blue you can see. And so these are the Leo and Roxy colors that I've chosen for that chart. There were three colors that I just couldn't get close enough or to, to feel correct with the rest of the chart. If you do order the kit or you order the floss pack from Caroline, you're going to get, you have the option of getting three um, DMC colors and those would be 610, 612, and 832. And so those are these colors, which I think are a lot of the neutrals. Now, this chart remember that you've got and in fact again lindy stitches um, stephanie did a beautiful beautiful um conversion of the border where she stitched the angels um sort of a more diverse palette instead of just all you know very very monochromatic little angels and so when i saw that I kind of put it together with um, having wanted to buy for a long time um, Ymir's skin collection. She Ymir hand dye silk. She's almond M and M's on Floss Tube and on Instagram. And almond M and M's studio. She sells beautiful silk, and they come in these beautiful little tiny skeins and they are all so sweet and so I purchased her skin collection and will put them in this little box here and I'm going to go ahead and put those uh, to use in the border so that our angels are a little bit more reflective of our community and all the beautiful people that we have that don't all look exactly the same so um, they're really really neat each of the of uh, the floss colors that she has are they're numbered but the numbers are dates of significant events that happened um, like 1866 is the Civil Rights Act and it's all these little tiny labels you can see I don't know if, you can, if that will focus so anyway these are beautiful um, and so that's going to be sort of an addition to uh, to that project so my start ahead, um, this was my just double check, make sure that everything looks the way that it should and that I like it and there it is. So I went ahead and started and got at least um, a portion of that bird and it's coming actually on camera. This is looking more yellow, which makes me not super happy because when in person this is actually much more blue and I'm not sure why it's picking up <laughs> let's try that maybe that'll be my screenshot what do you think maybe that'll be my thumbnail huh? so this again looks a lot more green than it is or a lot lighter than it is and uh, that is not the case I wonder if I could flip one of my lights off and that would help maybe that is a little closer 
Although, I don't know, that's still awfully green-blue. Interesting. Yeah, this looks much more sea foam on camera than it does in real life. In real life, this is a much more brilliant um, blue. It's much bluer than this. This looks more green. So this is not what it looks like. <laughs> Disappointing when technology lets you down, but that... Um, sort of trying to describe, I'm trying to think of what it even looks like or how to describe it, but I think that the photos on Instagram are much closer. <laughs> the way that it's uh, stitching up in person and I'm really happy with it so anyway uh, Laura's big birthday cell is the next stitch along um, so that one will be on January 1st and I'm really excited to continue I'm gonna leave it there I'm not gonna stitch on it anymore until the start um, so anyway that's all I have to say about that so I'd like to um, just a just officially say thanks to Caroline. I know it's extra work um, for her to put those combinations in her shop and uh, it was really nice of her to to do that because I think it's really I think it's fun to be able to have different options. Penny Tucker has been the um, she's the one who started the the hashtag and has been hosting that stitch along for Laura and she's got all kinds of different um, floss options, fabric options, places to buy that chart. Um, she's a wealth of information and a great resource. And so um, go look at the hashtag and follow her and um, you'll see all the, the different uh, combinations that people um, have the option to stitch from. So anyway, looking forward to that. All right. I'm gonna clear out some stuff. So next I have a finish. Um, I've been working on the Magical Mystery Tour series, which is the, these are all of the Beatles charts uh, that Barb designed. This is the second in the Magical Mystery Tour series. And I've already got three of them done so or maybe I just have two I have Blackbird and I have Eleanor Rigby those are both complete yeah so this is the third one that I have done so I have three more to finish I have the Octopus's Garden Yellow Submarine and Long and Winding Road and those are I started all of those in March May start all of those in May I've been making some progress on some of those and so this is, again, Strawberry Fields Forever, and here is my finish. So this is stitched on 32 Count Honey Linen by Be Stitch Me, and those are all the called for flosses. So I left it just as it was charted with the original date and also with the B because it's barbs. So anyway, just stitched up super cute. This is actually, um, this is a lot more stitching. <laughs> you look at this chart and it looks like, like, oh, that's pretty straightforward. There's a lot of popcorn, you know, a lot of the blossoms and some of the different motifs and um, the flowers. There's a lot of color changes, but it sure came out pretty. I'm really happy with it. I just love it. And I stitched this um, two strands over two. Look at how cute that house is. I love the roof. Ugh. They're just genius. So anyway, that's my finish. I don't have any uh, FFOs this time around, but I do have this as my finish. So the next I the next finish I have is actually a start and a finish. Um, I came home <laughs> 
from work one morning and I opened my mail and I had a, some charts that I had ordered from Expo. Is that right, Expo? New releases and was all excited and one of them was this and it's by Jeanette Douglas and it's called Chubby Bird. And it's just a little ornament size. How cute is that though? So Ellen Reed of Maximum Cross Stitch Power Hour, um, a couple months ago, she stitched a bird and she referred to it as her angsty bird collection. So she put, she stitched this gorgeous bird and it was the, um, I have that chart too and I can't think of the name of it. It's a, a Mojo Stitches chart. And, uh, and then she wrote, the world is on fire <laughs> underneath it. So it's kind of like a, this beautiful little bird and this like dread inducing quote underneath it, which is, so I shamelessly copied Ellen. Um, and I thought that bird had a perfect little look because it's so hop hop and so, so cute. And one of my favorite, and this, I, I sort of took it a little bit different tack, not just in sort of general world terms, but more, um, movie quote, which I love. I love my movies. But the movie Aliens, not Alien, it's the second in the sequel. Um, not movie world chronologically, but in the order in which they were released. Real world. So the first one was in the late 70s and it was Alien. And that was directed by Ridley Scott, and it was one of the best, like, most suspenseful, awesome space. I wouldn't call it a, I mean, I guess it's a horror movie, but it's, it's more of a sci-fi, like a suspenseful, scary sci-fi movie. It was great. But the second one, Aliens, it's like Bill Paxton, and it's got Paul Reiser and Sigourney Weaver, and then it has this little girl. Um, her character's name is Newt, and, uh... Newt is like the sole survivor of a colony of people who were left on a planet by a corporation that wants to terraform these planets. Anyway, she's talking about the aliens and her comment is, we better get back. It's getting dark and they mostly come at night, mostly. So that's what I put on mine. And that is stitched on a piece of 40 count maple sugar linen by Lakeside. And again, my colors are sort of letting me down. This, this linen is actually much, um, it's kind of pinkish. So it looks a lot like the artwork on the chart. Oh, it's kind of a beigey pink, but and then the text is stitched over one. So that's one over one on 40 count. So that is my homage to Ellen and her angsty birds wall. And my shameless expropriation of her idea. Which I, so what do they say that imitation is the highest form of fl flattery? Consider yourself imitated and flattered. All right, uh, other starts. I have made some other starts. And this, oh, by the way, these were the flosses that I used. So mostly the called for, but I didn't have, I think it was cherry cobbler. And there was another one that I didn't have. And so I used on the brighter pink, I used a raspberry puree. And then one of the neutrals, I use desert sand. But otherwise, I use the called for for that, for Chubby Bird. It's really fun. Wilderness, co classic color works, wilderness. Um, that's what these little, that's what the leaves are. Aren't they pretty? And that variegation, like I didn't spend a whole lot of time really considering where I was going to be, you know, placing stitches. 
but I do full crosses. I don't do like all in one direction unless I'm using DMC. Oh, hi. Can, I, can we focus? Hello? Um, but I do full crosses and just kind of randomly, you know, place them where whatever I need to do next is what I stitched. And so that variegation came out. It was, it's just really, really pretty. Okay, we are not cooperating today with, there we go. Ooh, better. So yeah, classic color works, wilderness, very pretty, really cool variegation, love it. Okay, so the next one, I only just have a tiny, tiny start on this. So I got a tiny start on the good Huswife. This is called Three Crows, and it is very small. It is only, um, the stitch count is 132 stitches wide by 54, which sounds a little bit bigger than, And this is, again, another piece. This is 40 count Honey by Be Stitch Me. And I am doing another Leo and Roxy conversion. So, again, that's just that's a tiny, tiny little start. Um, but I did work on it, so. I have one more start, and this kind of leads into... Um, what everyone is currently focused on for November, thanks to Jacob from Modern Folk Embroidery, and that is my um, Black Sampler November project. And uh, his, the start along is basically stitch whatever sampler or kind of any project that you like um, just using black floss. And he didn't specify, hey, you have to stitch one of mine, or you have to stitch, even though he has some beautiful, beautiful um, sampler options and uh, Stacy who's the 911 stitcher did a, a supplemental video where she went through and showed a ton of different really neat options for um, samplers that you could stitch during Black Sampler November so um, I'll link to her video because it's a really good kind of a comprehensive list of, of projects that you can choose from and it goes from small size to ginormous so but I decided along with a few other folks with um, Kathy from Tasmania uh, who is Kathy Taz Perdon on Instagram and also I think Laura is has already started this one but that's Anne Grimshaw so this is by the Scarlet Letter and it's that beautiful Quaker sampler with the wobbly letters and I saw Teresa Kitten Stitcher's finished version of this in one of her early videos and it's just beautiful so that's what I decided to start and um, I'm kind of <laughs> I'm not taking it off the scroll frame because as soon as I finish this video and upload it I'm gonna go right back to working on this so this is as far as I've gotten um, I still have my needle threaded. So that's page one. The letters are eyelets, and I don't know if it's going to let me get close enough for you to see them. But this is on 40 count mushroom. Also, it's it's either called mushroom or light mocha. It kind of it's it calls itself both. Every time you see it on one of the shops. It's Mushroom slash Light Mocha. And it's um, by Zweigart. And then I'm using Leo and Roxy chalkboard, which Jacob's talked about in his videos that that's his favorite. Black floss, just because of the variegation. It's got a really light variegation. It's a soft, sort of subtle black. And uh, I love it. It's very pretty. And I'm really happy to be stitching that. So, like I said, as soon as this is done, I'm going right back in, keep working on it. Okay, so that is all the starts that I have. Those are my starts and finishes. Those are my stitch alongs uh, to this point, and then we can go into works in progress. Starting on whips, I showed this last month, um, but D20 and Kari Nakin collaborated to 
use Kari's artwork uh, and deconverts it to cross stitch. And so this was their spooky release. This is three little hexes and pardon the printing. That's my terrible printer. Um, I talked about wanting to stitch these except for maybe making all three into one teacup and using the three hexes and popping them all around that little teacup and making a tea party. And so this is the progress um, that I have. And I really like how it's coming out. They are so cute. So I am using, this is a piece of 32 count uh, peony by Be Stitch Me. And I'm using two strands of DMC, so two over two of the called for DMC. So uh, it's B5200 for the white, and then 310, and then, let's see. By the way, here's the, uh, here's the chalkboard floss. You can see a little bit of that variegation. That's what I'm using for Anne Grimshaw. So just a very mild variegation, but it's not, um, you know, just blasting you with complete. So like this is, for example, this is 310. So you can see that um, chalkboard has a much less aggressive <laughs> darkness to it. So that's the contrast. Um, but this is the color palette for Little Hexes. And so again, I'm using uh, B5200 for the white, 310, and then 907 is the green, and 3837 is the purple. Super, super cute. So hopefully I'll be done with that uh, next time. I think, and I'm not sure how I want to finish this yet. I'm still thinking about it. A pillow would be really cute with like a purple velvet on the back or black velvet. Super cute. Um, the next, let's see. So my next whip that I, and these are all things that I've stitched since my last video. So I have more works in progress um, than what I'm showing today. But again, the video is just gonna encompass things that I've touched since the last time I made video. So Yellow Submarine. Uh, so this is one of the three remaining Magical Mystery Tour series pieces that I have. And this is stitched on 28 count Dusk Lugana. And this is by Jody from Steel City Stitchers. And I am in her Fabric of the Month Club, but this was not one of those. This I purchased, um, I think from Fire Poppies. Is that right? I think so. And that is using mostly called for. Oops. We're really having a focus party today, aren't we? Isn't it cute? Anyway, that's where I'm at with that one. Uh, and then the last whip. Oh, nope, I lied. I have three more. This is another stitch along. I'm gonna leave it in the bag actually. This is um, a terrible printer uh, working copy of Elizabeth Adelsey by Hedgerow Stitching. And that is the project that uh, everyone started for Betsy's stitch along for um, this, her stupid tumor cell. So, uh, and you can go back and watch. Uh, I think that everybody, if you're, if you're sort of following along with that, you know what that's about. She's got an acoustic neuroma um, in one of her ears. And so she's been working with uh, a few different sets of physicians to navigate the best course forward. And she is, um, very inspiring in her approach to something that um, a lot of people would be sort of um, pretty 
I know I would be pretty hamstrung by it and she is just taking it in stride and she's doing her research and she's got a great attitude about it and of course she's Betsying the hell out of it so um, her hashtag is stupid tumor cell and that is as far as I've gotten and I'm using the called for um, flosses so I think I'm using a combination of the DMC that's called for and the over dyed it's really cute um, there's a couple mistakes in there I'm leaving them and I'm not taking it off the scrolls because this is another one of those that I kind of have as a mobile project and so if I ever get a break in between um, like at work or wherever it's an easy one because it's pretty small and I can just pop it in and start working on it uh, that brings me to uh, the f there's actually the most of my projects are stitch alongs I'm just realizing almost all of them what's that say about me <laughs> this is the first one that I started Joan Sands by Modern Folk Embroidery last video I said I needed to kind of get get moving on it because I was behind and we're planning to complete this and to put in the date on New Year's Eve uh, because it is a Hogmanay sampler which just means New Year's um, so I don't know where I was last time but I know I wasn't this far so I actually did uh, make some progress I've started putting in the scaffolding of each of the letter rows completed the um, the main portion of the border added a few more of those flowers and so I'm feeling a little better about where I'm at with that this is stitched on 37 count Wayfarer's cloak this is just a legacy linen I really like those um, they are a little tighter weave a little more they just have some heft to them and so they keep your stitches looking really really neat and even though it's small you know a 37 count is pretty small I feel like as a newer stitcher um, I use that to begin with with a I guess it was a while yeah Wild Styrus Naps um, and Logan was a project that I finished and it was a little tiny sampler I did that on, on Wayfarer's Cloak and it was the first time I'd ever done eyelets and it just gives you a really nice structured fabric to work with I know some people have talked about a looser weave even if it's like a 40 count and actually the contrast the reason I'm bringing this up is because the next piece I have is an older piece of Weeks dye works uh, in the color beige and it's not the Zweigart blend and so it's got a looser and it's beautiful I really like it and I like the project that I'm putting on it having that looser weave to it but it's just a contrast in the way that uh, linen feels and and how it is to work on and the way that your tension has to be slightly different and because I stitch on a scroll frame or in a hoop or in a q-snap I'm able to control some of that tension I don't know how I, I can understand how some people if they stitch in hand would be very specifically drawn to one type of linen because it makes it easier for you know and I don't know I'm speaking out of my head because I don't stitch in hand I can't I've tried and uh Again, I'll continue to try, but I'm just not great at it. Um, but it is just a contrast. And so some of those um, legacy linens are not only less expensive, um, and there are a few online shops that, like I think Hoop and Frame is one of them. Um, I know Victorian Rose Needle Arts, Tinka, who has a fantastic customer service um, and hoop and frame but hoop and frame has a like a comprehensive color list of those legacy linens and they are they're significantly less expensive so if you're looking to sort of supplement your stash that's a good way to go about it and most of those colors are beautiful base colors to be able to then you can either over dye them yourselves or you could just add maybe a little coffee tea dye or do some modeling um, or 
like me just use them as they are because they're really pretty and they give you a nice variety of warmth neutral drab gray whatever um i've kind of settled on a couple of those colors that ones that i really like um and wayfarer's cloak i think i had a big enough piece of it that and the, the two samplers reminded me enough of each other that Joan Sands and Ann Logan, I think I'll have them hanging together. And it, having them on the same fabric, even though completely different color palettes, it just makes them really pretty. So, so that brings me to the last stitch along. And that is um, oh, and I've kind of forgotten again. You know, I get all these things ready and then I just like space out. <laughs> Forget like this is a yellow submarine color palette. It's all called for. Gorge. This is Elizabeth Adelsey. And that again is the combination of DMC and Overdyed. Pretty. This is Joan Sands and Again, I'm doing that with DMC, one strand over two threads. Floss. I may be missing uh, one or two of these because I've got them pulled for a different project, but so pretty. Then uh, the final is the birthday stitch along for Ellen Reed. And that is Mary Griffiths, 1873 by GGR. Uh, again, a terrible, well, actually, that's not too bad. I think that's the original chart front page liner, so that <laughs> this is not my printer's fault. But I put some stitches in on this, and you can see, again, this is a 40 count, is that right? 40 count beige by Weeks Dye Works, which is the called for for this chart. And I just finished, got to the other edge so that I could cut my fabric. And I haven't gotten very far. I really like that, uh, the variegation on the green of the border. So, and again, that is a combination or it's all called for, pretty much. And I'm doing that one strand over two threads. So it feels like a lot of stitching. You know, and in a month, um, I think that's kind of what, one of the reasons why it's been a while since I've made a video, because I was just really enjoying kind of digging into some of these projects. Um, so I've been doing a few other things as well um, the great floss drop trade, and you can see in the background, this is my, uh, floss drop board that I made, and it's just kind of fun to have one of each out, and then I've got a box that, um, I have the rest of them collected in, so as I'm kidding up projects, um, and pulling some of those, it's really fun to have all of the threads on different floss drops. It's just cool. People have been so creative. And for those of you who have sent me your floss drops, thank you so much. I, again, am going to probably just do one dedicated video that will be to cover and show all of these different, you know, and just talk about them because they're so beautiful. So, um, all right. So I think I've shown before that um, Lori and Olivia, so Lori is textilist on Floss Tube and Instagram, and uh, Olivia is Olivia B. And they are hosting a Blackbird Designs quilt along. And I started out and did a little, you know, baby wool applique and made it into a kind of an envelope bag and I've showed that in the previous video um, but then I 
showed last video also some of the fabric colors that I have chosen to start working on this. And my goal is to do like one block a month and just sort of tackle it that way and be kind of deliberate about it, choosing fabrics. And you know, the fabrics that are shown here are out of print. Those are old Blackbird designs. Are they, though? I think so. Um, but finding things, you know, that are, again, making it your own and, and uh, sort of personalizing it a little bit, not necessarily copying. Um, but I do like the, the purple, the cheddar. Oh, and by the way, um, go and watch Susan Stanley's most recent video. She does a whole discussion about orange, which I love, you know, I love orange because all of my intro screen and all of my text and everything else is orange. Um, and she could, gives a whole discussion about that and why certain shades of orange are called cheddar and gives a lot of examples. So I'm learning how to applique and I have decided that what I'll do for each of the, I'm just going to kind of play it by ear and if I choose to use different techniques for each of the blocks I might do that but in this particular case I'm just doing needle turn applique which just means that I've got the fabric, I've cut it out so that it's got an extra eighth to a quarter of an inch of seam allowance and then I'm just turning that under as I applique. So this is where I am to this point. Let's see if I can get this in here. Um, the, the house, the roof, and those two windows have been stitched down. It's kind of hard to see this off of here. So these are my, these are the pieces that I haven't placed yet. I kind of placed everything in advance and then backed everything off again. And then I'm starting to add a few things back on. So that is the, really? Hello? swearing. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, obviously these aren't stitched down yet, but those are the colors that I'm going with. I'm doing sort of a paper bag, um, vertical line background, and I decided to go with that darker purple botanical and a lighter purple for the roof, and then a combination of cheddar and some orange and some so it's all a work in progress, as they say, and I'm just playing at this point because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I've never done this before. So it's kind of zen. You just sort of stitch along, and I, I feel like cross-stitch projects, when you have giant ones, they do take a long time, and so having something like that that's a little bit more um, manageable feels, feels kind of awesome. It just goes faster. You feel like you're making progress more quickly. But then you step back and you realize that you have another 25 pieces to stitch down. And that's only one block. So, And I went ahead and decided to start the center block because no one looks at the very middle of a piece first. So, of course, all of my mistakes won't be noticed by anyone. It's like, I could have started like down here you know, or this one. Great big simple, you know. No, let's just do that one. Let's go right right to the, because I like dessert first. <clears throat> so I'm going to try to keep this under an hour this time. And uh, I feel like I had a lot to cover. So I got to go back in and I'm gonna edit. I'm not going to do too much. In fact, I'm not going to really do any haul. Uh, but I did want to show something that I got um, from the aforementioned Betsy Klager as a gift. And so she sent me, um, kind of out of the blue, just a sweet little card. Look at those cute kitties. 
have an ice cream. And then she sent me a panel, a fat quarter bundle panel. And so I cut those out and they, it, she said that when she got this, she thought of me and I couldn't be more there. It's bugs. It's bugs and butterflies and flowers and it's got bees and it has grasshoppers and ladybugs and then this one is so cool. It's butterfly larva <laughs> and butterflies. So Betsy, thank you. This is really, really nice. And I, of course, am in the process of making lots of project bags and have been. And these are, I've been saving this because I wanted to show everybody, but um, these are going to go to good use. So how cute are those? And, oh, that's the other one. Look at these frogs. Aren't they cute? froggies. So cute. So thank you, Betsy. I love them. I'm going to make cute stuff with it. You may see it again. I don't know. Maybe. Speaking of that, we're going to announce the winners of the giveaway. So last month, <clears throat> Last month we gave away, or we um, did a drawing for, how do you enter a drawing for? Let's just start this over. Let's try that again. My last video, I announced I was going to be giving away two project bags that I will make. Um, and that there will be two winners, so one project bag for each. And the word to use in the comments was project. And so uh, there were 113 of you who used the word project in your comment. And our two winners are RC Crafty Land. It's the first one. And Joanne Pacheco. And I will put their names over here. And I'll reach out to each of you in... Um, and reply to your comment and if you're on Instagram you can just direct message me and then we can uh, have a conversation about what whether you wanted one of the uh, the tall project bags like this with the pocket and the tab for floss or whatever or if you wanted the more you wanted the more standard type with the zipper on the top and uh, sort of a more standard project bag size. So we'll chat about that. And I do have a number of different fabric themes and just we'll, we'll get something that, that will fit your aesthetic or will fit a project that you have going on. So thanks for playing. Um, for next time, I've told you guys this before that I have a very uh, robust Excel spreadsheet and now I'm getting to the point where I'm much better about not purchasing anything um, when I am away from my Excel spreadsheet. Sometimes I'll put things in carts or whatever and look at things or remind myself later to go back and take a look. Um, but I wanted to get the collection of the Hollyberry Farm pieces and This was this is what I figured out was my downfall. I had put on I think it was on Kitten Stitcher's site, like where you could have them email you if something is back in stock. So I did that, but I had also found that specific chart on a different site and bought it. Knew that I wanted it, knew I didn't have it, and then I forgot. And so when I got the email from Kitten Stitcher, it was en route from another vendor. And I also was like, oh, it's back in stock. Yay, I'll buy it. And every time I do that, I'm always like, oh, 
And I'm like, oh, well, I can give it away. Because I like you guys. So this is good timing. That's why we'll do it now. Um, I have two of these. It is Christmas at Hollyberry Farm. It's really cute, even though that white house is massive. It is huge. So this will be our giveaway. And I think we'll just use, let's use the word, um, let's use the word berry. So you can tell me your favorite berry. You can tell me something that you make out of berries, whether it's your favorite jelly or jam combination or your favorite pie. I am a cake girl. I like cake. So if I were to pick, if I had to pick between pie or cake, I would always pick cake. But I do like pie. My husband loves pie. It is his favorite. So he makes a mean, actually he makes a mean strawberry rhubarb crumble, but I think strawberry rhubarb pie is his favorite. I don't know. I think all pie is his favorite. I think if you asked him his favorite pie, he would just say yes. So use the word berry and this will be our giveaway for next time. So I, I know I'm a little, like, yikes, case in point. I know I'm a little all over the place today. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, but I've really been enjoying watching a lot of you over the last month or so. It's been really helpful. Um, I don't, I don't really yeah, have anything specific to, you know, but I think that like to complain about, but I do think that there are certain, um, stretches of time that can be more uh, emotionally tenuous than others for me. And so over the last month, it's been, you know, like I said, work has been um, busy, but also kind of fraught, you know, a little bit. And so to be able to come home and just focus on, you know, beautiful projects and watching um, everybody in the community doing awesome things and having these stitch alongs and and things that we're doing as a community has been um, really, really nice. So um, thank you, and it's great to catch up, and I will be in touch much sooner uh, than this gap between the last video and this one. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great um, Black Sampler November, first couple weeks here. And uh, we'll see you before the end of the month. And that is going to do it for today. So um, so yeah, be safe. Be nice to each other. Have a happy day. Bye.